I have a few different growing spaces this year. Uh, this is my green tunnel that I'm currently weeding and mulching with that uh, rabbit bedding. And this year I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna put my corn. I, in past years, haven't really grown much corn because the bugs get into it and I find it really hard to protect it and get it covered up. So this year I'm gonna put it into my uh, green tunnel. I've been having some really great success with these little row covers here with just putting it over the top of the plants that I wanna protect. And so I might just do that with my kales and different leaves that I would normally grow in the green tunnel. Where possible, I like to concession sow my vegetables so I don't get a big massive harvest, but I can get little bits at a time just to extend our growing season and so we can eat fresh. However, I can't keep up with the broccoli and the cauliflower at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blanch a few off and I'm gonna put them in the freezer to try and preserve them. I'm just cutting them roughly into the same size so they all cook the same. And then I'm getting a bowl there of iced water just to chill them down to stop the cooking process. You can see my steamy hot pot of water there, boiling water, and I'm only putting them in there for like a minute. I just want them to change color from the, the nice green color to the darker green color when I've cooked them. Then I'm gonna pop them into the ice water to stop the cooking process. And I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing with the cauliflower. So I'm cutting them all into the same shapes, popping them in the boiling water for about a minute. Cauliflower can take a little bit longer than the broccoli. And then I'm just going to sort of drain them off. A colander would be really good here just to drain off all that water and pop them onto a bit of um, something absorbent. You don't want to put them on a tea towel or something that could potentially have a type of smell because it will retain the smell. The broccoli will retain the smell from the tea towel. So you want to put them on something really clean, like a bit of paper towel. I've just put them on some baking paper there and I'm just drying up the water. And then I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag. Once they're all nice and dried and completely cool, I'm going to chuck them in the freezer. If you blanch your vegetables before putting them in the freezer, they don't go all spongy and wet. Uh, like if you were to just harvest them and put them straight into the freezer, it sort of um, changes the texture of the vegetables. So it's a good idea to blanch them first and then it's just like a the same as a shop-bought piece of vegetable that you get in a freezer bag. While I'm eating them fresh, I can leave this for when cauliflower and broccoli aren't in season. Today we're putting in a hitching rail. This is a place where I can tie up a horse or even a milking cow, just somewhere solid. Up until this point, we've only really tied things up to trees, which is really unsafe because they get wrapped around the trees and they scratch on the branches and hurt themselves. So I wanted to put this hitching rail right in the middle of the driveway, pretty much where we park the cars. I want it in the spot that's really busy. So whatever we're tying up there is really in the middle of everything. When you're working with horses or animals that need to be tied up um, for a purpose, you know, say you're saddling up your horse or you need to tie up a cow to milk the cow, you need them to be really steady and really calm when they're tied up. And so it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice tying up and you need a really secure place. I also want it in the middle of the driveway so the horses can be really well desensitized, which just means, you know, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of things going on around them and they remain calm because they know it's safe. So, you know, the other day we went to Pony Club and our little pony Nash, he was super calm. You know, there was flags and lots of people and lots of cars around because he'd been desensitized on the driveway. He was cool as a cucumber at Pony Club. This takes me like a good hour to get all the dirt packed back in there. So let's just skip it. All right, Dom's finished trimming up the rail and now it's gonna fit perfectly onto the two posts. Almost perfectly. Now I'm just gonna give everything a nice light sand so it's all nice and smooth, so no splinters. And then Dom's gonna come through with just a bit of a uh, flat plate there and make a bracket to hold the top brow on. And then we're pretty much done.
We have some beautiful big macadamia trees you can see just behind me there. They produce so many macadamias, so I decided that I'd sprout a few. So I sprouted them, potted them up, and today is the day that we're drilling holes and we're getting them put into the ground to hopefully produce a heap more macadamias. Not only can we eat them and cook with them, but if we ever don't have a dairy animal, I can make milk out of them. Doing my least favorite job on the farm. I'm filling the water tanker up. This um, gives water to our veggie garden. And it's so dangerous because this water tanker gets so heavy with water. And then I have to t tow it up the big hill. Tow it up the big hill all the way to the house so that I can water the garden. So it's taking the dam water and this pump that we've got on the front here it can work to push water or it can work to um, suck water so um, at the moment i've got it into the dam you can see the tank over there that is um, holding the holding the hose up into the water so it's sucking clean water off the top not muddy water from the bottom and it's sucking through this pipe goes through this one here into the tanker so um, it wasn't working just a second ago because I didn't um, like purge the system I didn't add water into the motor so that it could start sucking so we'll turn it on and see if it works now to um, check in the tank climb up here and check in the tank see there it's completely empty and there's no water coming in so to try and move it out of the gateway that it's in to the sheep paddock where all the sheep will get out if I don't shut the gate and the tractor won't start. And I don't know why. My bucket is just above the post. So I should be able to shut the gate. I'm really lucky that Bucket just cleared that gate post, otherwise I would be stuck with an open gate in a sheep paddock. I'm gonna have to leave that there for now. But the tank is full, so that's good. It's all packed up, ready. Ready for Tom to get home from work and give me a hand to get it out of the paddock. 